Dear students, let us discuss about the interpedicular fossa. Before we discuss about the interpedicular fossa, let us see the image. This is the inferior surface of the brain where you can identify the frontal lobes, the temporal lobes and the occipital lobes which are covered by the cerebellum the brain stem of which you are seeing the medulla, the pons and then the parts of the midbrain that is the crust cerebrae or cerebral peduncles you are seeing. And in relation with the frontal lobe you are seeing the olfactory bulb, olfactory tract and then which is dividing into two forming a triangular area known as the olfactory trigone you are seeing. Then you are seeing the optic nerves that are crossing one another and forming the optic chiasma and from which the optic tracts are starting. Then you have seen the two mammillary bodies part of the hypothalamus. Then you are seeing a grey matter area which is known as supersinarium and with an opening you are seeing and this is a, the connection of the pituitary gland to the brain that is the pituitary stalk. This is the area of the pituitary stalk, stalk you are seeing. So with this orientation let us see what is interpedicular fossa. So you are seeing a depressed area between the two temporal lobes on the inferior surface okay. and this is the interpedicular fossa. And what is its shape you will be going to study. So which is roughly rhomboidal in shape. And its location, the boundaries, contents and clinical importance we are going to discuss. The interpedicular fossa is rhomboid in shape. And it is located at the base of the brain. And its boundaries are anteriorly optic chiasma. You can see in this picture. And posteriorly will be the antero superior surface of the pons you are seeing. And antero laterally it is bounded by the optic tracts. So which wind around the cerebral peduncles or crust cerebri you are seeing. So they are converging towards this interpeduncular fossa the rhomboid shaped area then posterolaterally you are seeing the two cerebral peduncles which are diverging from the center to the periphery they are diverging so that is what you are seeing in this picture and lateral to the optic chiasma that is the anterior boundary you will be seeing the olfactory stray which I have mentioned and then forming an olfactory trigone and there is anterior perforated substance. This is the area of anterior perforated substance. So these are the anterior, posterior, anterolateral and posterolateral boundaries. Now let us see the floor. So from behind forwards that is from the Pons towards the optic chiasma, the post floor is formed by the posterior perforated substance, which is a layer of grey matter in the angle between the crust cerebri or C. And this is pierced by central branches of the posterior cerebral arteries. Then you are seeing the mammillary bodies, the two spherical bodies that belong to hypothalamus. Then you are seeing the tuber cinerium which is a raised area of grey matter which is anterior to the mammillary bodies. Then you are seeing the narrow stalk of pituitary gland which is known as the infundibulum that is attached to the tuber cinerium. So these are the structures that are forming the flow from posterior to 
anterior or from behind forwards. They are the posterior perforated substance, mammillary bodies, tuber cinereum and infundibulum of the pituitary gland. Now let us discuss the contents of the interpeduncular fossa. So we are seeing the two cerebral peduncles or crest cerebri. On their medial side, we are seeing the oculomotor nerve coming out. So that is from the dorsomedial aspect will be the oculomotor nerve. And on its dorsal lateral, you will be seeing the trochlear nerve, but it is not a content of interpeduncular fossa. Then you are seeing the circle of villis. Circle of villis you are seeing. So an arterial circle, a polygonal circle of blood vessels that are anastomosing at the base of the brain in the interpeduncular fossa. And the formation of circular fluids we will study separately. So the contents of interpeduncular fossa are oculomotor nerve and circular villis. So now you know the location, the boundaries and contents of the interpeduncular fossa. Now let us see the clinical importance of the interpeduncular fossa. This is an MRI image of the brain where you can see the interpeduncular fossa. This is the interpeduncular fossa. You can see the optic nerves and this is the crust cerebri. The two crust cerebri or cerebral peduncles you are seeing here. So this is the interpeduncular fossa and this is incised to resect anteriorly located lesions that are medial to oculomotor nerve, which we call it as the ventromedial midbrain lesions. So for their surgery, the interpeduncular fossa is approached. Then for the vascular lesions of this area also, particularly the basilar bifurcation. So the basilar artery will bifurcate into the two posterior cerebral arteries along the upper margin of the pons. So, at that area, if there is an aneurysm or vascular reconstructions has to be performed, the approach is through the interpeduncular fossa. Now, revise by looking at the specimen, the depressed area at the base of brain, which is the interpeduncular fossa. And it contains the cistern of subarachnoid space within which lies the circle of villis. And look at the boundaries anteriorly, the optic chiasma, anterolaterally, optic tracts on each side, posterolaterally, crest cerebri of midbrain on each side, and posteriorly, the midline part of upper border of pons. And regarding the structures in the fossa from anterior to posterior, what you will be seeing is the tuber cinereum, which is a part of hypothalamus. The raised area of gray matter in the floor of third ventricle is this tuber cinereum. The infundibulum of the pituitary gland will be attached to the tuber cinereum. And behind it, you are seeing the to mammillary bodies, parts of the hypothalamus, then the posterior perforated substance, which is pierced by the central branches of the posterior cerebral arteries. And the content, you are seeing the oculomotor nerves on the dorsomedial aspect of the crust cerebrae.